So um, I am uh, Andrew Dudford. Um, uh, my proper name is Mr. Underscore Dudders. If you want to follow me, I talk about principally uh, opening the data saving the world, the football team Exeter City, and nerdily about cycling. So the Venn diagram is probably just me, but if anyone is interested, <laughs> that's where you can find me. Um, and like, that, that's me. You can work that bit out. Um, so I wanted. I was asked to talk uh, by Gavin about um, the data, the web, and data, and making data part of the web. And I currently am chief publishing officer at ONS. I'll talk about a little bit more about the ONS side of things um, in a moment about how that connects together. But um, I wanted to start by emphasising something about the web and the fact that the web is fantastic. The web is this beautiful thing, and I don't think we necessarily take the time to remember that. It's this democratic medium. Over half of the population of the world have access to most of the information we've ever created. That's an amazing thing, and I think sometimes we just need to remember that that is part of what a lot of people in this room are responsible for. We are here to try and make these things better, and certainly those of us who work in the civil service have a real mandate to remember this stuff. Um, and so I'm going to do a little bit of a tour of some of the bits of the web that I've been involved in, um, how I broke some of them, and then how I'm trying to make that a little bit better in the future. Um, so one of the first jobs I had was uh, running uh, uh, part of the Doctor Who website for the BBC. Um, I currently am responsible for publishing uh, employment numbers and GDP at 9.30 in the morning. If that goes wrong, things are very bad. It is not as bad as the time when I published the wrong Dalek picture. <laughs> <laughs> My word, people will tell you about that when you do that. But the interesting thing for me about um, when I was working on Doctor Who was I was having fun with those lots of creative things. And we were doing lots of stuff with horrible JavaScript all over the place, and we were messing around. And I was able to do this because the BBC at the time had this amazing project uh, called Slash Programs, where they were creating a single page for every episode of everything that was ever broadcast. So we knew we had these lovely canonical references so you could always point to things. And so I was able to play around and do these kind of things. It was really hard to find this now because this is pretty much fallen off the internet and that might be okay, but over time things change. So after um, I did various things, I started working for this organization called uh, Wildscreen. Um, and that was a charity that David Attenborough had set up to try and collate all of um, natural history, video information from broadcasters around the world and images, put it in one place so that everybody could access this amazing information. That is no longer available online because rights are complicated and infrastructure is expensive and charities are difficult to run. So that's another thing to remember that working in this kind of space stuff doesn't necessarily have longevity. So to try and kind of think about how I could get better at that, I went back to the BBC and I worked on the BBC Archive an amazing project, um, sort of real kid in the sweet shop kind of stuff. But unfortunately, the BBC's archive page is no longer being updated because it has been archived. So <laughs> these are kind of challenges that the web has over time. Um, so when I was working at the BBC, I was very lucky to work with this man. Um, if you don't recognize him, it's a guy called Tony Aggie. I would recommend um, immediately Googling after this, the story plus Tony Aggie, trying this amazing presentation again that was selected out of his career. Um, BBC Archive team is an amazing group of people. Tony was the leader of it. There are lots of incredible people who worked in that team. Many of them are still at the BBC. That's the reason why I still believe the BBC is an amazing place. But Tony had this view about lists. Lists are really important, and that's something that's kind of been um, really on my mind recently about the importance of making sure that we remember things and have proper lists around them. And the web is really good for lists. We can write things down, and we can remember how they work. Um, and so after I left the BBC Archive, came to ONS. Now, ONS is a wonderful organization, and I was very lucky to join ONS just after it had launched a new website. So they done an awful lot of work, and I was um, asked to take on that website and consider how we could start to make further improvements to it. And one of the really key things that came through to me is that ONS has this amazing information that a lot of people make lots of very important choices on. The ONS is empowered to run a census that decides where hospitals get built, and really kind of important societal things. And we need to make sure that that information that's produced by that organization is available to the right people to use in the right ways at the right time. There is a challenge, um, and that is this. <laughs> um, uh, because the world works on Excel. And I don't mean just, it's kind of like a cutesy thing to say, oh yeah, there's Excel, but I mean everything in government runs on Excel. And the problem is that everything has conditional formatting in it. So <laughs> everything in some spreadsheets will be capped in kind of like pink, sometimes that'll be bold, sometimes it'll have red behind it, sometimes it'll have different things. 
And that is problematic. It's really hard to make data available to lots of people when it's in these different sources. And that's something that I've been spending time and effort and energy thinking about how do we ensure that this stuff is, the most avail is available in the best ways. And Excel is, at times, the best way to distribute that information. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Excel in, that, in some contexts. In other contexts, it's completely the wrong way of distributing the information. So working out and making sure we've got different ways through that is extremely important. Um, but also, I feel a little bit like I'm just here sort of um, talking about this stuff time and time again. The idea of taking information out of spreadsheets, making it part of web, having programming interfaces, making sure that this information is there. I'm not the first person to have this idea. ONS are not the first people to think about this. This isn't even the first attempt that ONS has made to do this. So I'm really kind of doing a lot of time thinking at the moment, how do we break through this idea that this is a problem that we need to solve and how do we collectively get better at it? And I've been thinking quite a lot about uh, this quote actually, which I found when I was looking for that picture of Tony Aggie, um, which is about we need to try and take these ideas out. So I spend a lot of my time talking to the same small community of people. I worry that my um, sphere is too small about the people I'm engaging with and that there is a wider collection of people that have to buy into this idea of making av information available as being so important. Um, and so at ONS, we've been doing some work in this area. We've taken a lot of the spreadsheets that we have. ONS is doing some amazing work, I think. I'm really excited to do proper processing of the information, building out data infrastructure so it's not based on Excel. It has proper data warehousing. It's using the right techniques. But in the short term, we're taking some of the information produced by ONS we're tidying up those spreadsheets, we're running them through a collection of scripts so that there are consistent ways that they're described, which means that over time, it becomes easier to move around the ONS website. We can make the metadata of what's inside those Excel files available so that we don't have to have people downloading information from our website to find out what's contained within it, just to make that whole process easier and simpler. It's a time-consuming thing. We've been spending the best part of 18 months trying to do this the parts of these services are available in beta. I think through the magic of this wonderfully process, someone's going to tweet out a link as I say that, so please do check that out on the, the hashtag that was described earlier. Um, and so also it means that we can do things like produce APIs. These are really important because technical people want to use them, but they're also really important that an API can give an answer, which means that people like Google can do really important things like searching for the population of the UK, gives you a number, you're not coming to our site, but you are getting data that we're providing. And I think that's the kind of thing where we can have a massive, massive impact. Um, but also we need to remember that data quality is always going to show up through these things. It's population pyramid for Exeter, the greatest city in the world. And we can see that there's been some um, sort of re reasons for disclosure probably, that the number of females aged 90 plus has been put into a single thing rather than a single year of age. We have to remember to have context with the information we're providing even when it's programmatically thinking about the metadata that's associated with these records so that people know how they can make their decisions based on the information we provide. Um, also, trying to do this and think about how it can go not just in ONS, but across any form of government statistical service. ONS only produces about half of the statistics in the UK, so if you want to look at something like the impact of an aging population on society, you need to go to lots of different sources. I'm really interested in working across the GSS, um, and that's a project that hopefully we'll have more on soon. Um, and also, just a kind of a final thing on this, we can all do this. The web is ours. There's no kind of like center to the web. That's a really important thing. There's no little bit with all the ninjas inside who are doing all the clever stuff. It's, it's our responsibility. <laughs> so all of us have to think about how we can do this. And there's lots of conversations. People will show you lots of things tonight with programs and project boards and big PowerPoint presentations and swanky things. I would just ask, take your time and think is the work you're doing actually making the web better and making things better for your user? Because I think that's an absolutely vital thing. Uh, thank you very much. We're hiring a few methods. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Andy. Do we have any questions for Andy? I'm sure there must be lots. We've got one over there. Again, I'll take them in batches of three. We've got a couple more questions. Yep, down here. And one more. Excellent. Uh, so we'll start over there. Hi. Um, 
just wanted to sort of reflect on your uh, everything is an Excel mm -hmm. um, and whether you could expand a bit about why you think that is. Oh, sorry, I'm Ed Parks, I work with government departments on, on, on data. <clears throat> and then down here. Hi, Smealing Harris from the Legal Education Foundation. Um, two questions, which I'll try to keep quick. First is whether you've been thinking about things like um, equalities duties in your reorganising or representing of government data and ways of showing disaggregated data by protected characteristics. You already, of course, had one with male versus female and extra. Um, and the other question is the what thinking you're doing on data across government. So, for example, um, decisions in the welfare department ending up in MOJ in the courts and tribunals. Thank you. And third question, just there. Hi, uh, Cecilia Anderson from Department for Transport. Um, I was just wondering what sort of engagement work you've been doing with users of the statistics to prepare them for not getting things in Excel, maybe? Because um, I feel that the pull is very much from the customer side to get things in Excel. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't quite catch the, the context of the question. I heard Excel and then. Okay, great. So um, I think Excel is has been and will be for quite some time a good final step for things to take. So there are a collection of different systems across the government and certainly within ONS that produce a collection of outputs and for a long time one of the easiest transport mechanisms for that has been Excel. Um, that's I think because it gives analysts a level of control over the presentation of data um, and as I say uh, I don't think, I'm not saying as any part of this that Excel is necessarily a bad idea I just think that it doesn't have to be the only way that presenting information and certainly things like conditional formatting within Excel actively makes it difficult to do other things with that. Um, and uh, believe me, I'm aware of time. I can talk about Excel for such a long time. Um, <laughs> on the disaggregation of data point, um, uh, so yeah, we've been thinking about that quite a lot. Um, what we're trying to do is ensure that things can be broken down by the dimensions that exist inside those data sets. Um, at the moment, the work we're doing is around discrete data sets, and we're now allowed to break down individual one individual data sets to ideally to a single observation. So, if there is multiple values, so um, an age range, a gender, or whatever is in there, that you can construct a question that will give you um, just the information that you're looking for. Because I'm certainly aware that um, statistics are often published as the outputs of surveys, and the surveys that are undertaken and the thing that is published it's quite difficult sometimes to have the translation of knowing what's going to be inside that and so we need to do more with that. Um, and from a cross-government point of view, um, I'm keeping the sphere of the work we're doing within statistics. There are some very clever people, quite probably clever people in this room who are looking at cross-government data things. Um, I wish them the very best with that. Um, and <laughs> uh, and uh, part of the transport, was it? Um, so, uh, we're not going to get rid of Excel. I'm, I'm where I'm on the record. We are absolutely not getting rid of Excel. I want to be able to leave this building alive. Um, but from a user research point of view, um, we are spending so much time and effort engaging with our users. We try and get out um, every two weeks to do face-to-face -face user research around the country. It's something I'm incredibly proud that the team does. We also do quite a lot of, kind of online things, multivariate testing and the likes. Um, what we're really getting is that there are a certain group of people who would like to have um, application programming interface kind of view, so consistent data programmatically or machine readable. There are another group of people who want to be able to have Excel. The thing they're looking for is perhaps a little bit more consistency. So if they're taking a spreadsheet from one set of statistics and a spreadsheet from another set of statistics, that they have some greater understanding that not the information is the same, but certainly they know their way around it. And that we can make people's lives easier and same time and effort by doing that. And also, as I very briefly mentioned, if we can do a better job of describing what's contained within a data set, before you start to download it. I think that will, that absolutely will make life easier for a lot of people. And we see that time and time again through the research that we're doing. Excellent. Uh, any more questions? Otherwise, I will ask Andy to talk for the next three and a half minutes about Excel, because I'm sure we would all really enjoy that. The Institute also runs in Excel. Uh, we've got a question uh, down here at the front. We've got another one there. And do we have a final question in this round? Right at the back as well. Hi. Uh, I'm. Dan Barrett, I work at the Houses of Parliament. Um, 
You talk about, um, sorry, the work with Google. How did you persuade decision makers in your organization that it was good for your data to exist on the web rather than to exist on your organization's website as a, as a destination? Thank you. Uh, then over here. Thanks. Uh, John Downing, Ofgem. Um, so a lot of the data, you know, you can provide data some, to someone, but it's actually a calculation and the process of creating that statistic. Is there some way that you're thinking about presenting that information to your users? Excellent. And then right at the back. Matt Curlog from the Cabinet Office. Um, you talked a bit about, sort of, I liked your little flow diagram that, um, uh, that sort of basically is an API type environment. I wondered um, just how much engagement you're, you've taken with Nomis, because um, obviously they do a lot. Of, they've already done a lot of this with your existing data, and I guess is it is this a, is ultimately a plan to replace, or is it sort of working in partnership, etc.? Sure, thank you. Excellent, thank you very much. Uh, so I'll go reverse for those. So Nomis, I am responsible for Nomis. So yes, I absolutely work with that. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful system that has grown over a long period of time. Um, for those of you who don't know. Um, uh, and this is a sort of partner project that ONS has worked with Durham University around um, the uh, publishing of a lot of data that started with the labour market and has been used in publishing of some of our census data previously. Um, our goal is to publish the outputs of the next census on the ONS website, um, and we're continuing to talk to our colleagues in Nomis because they do some absolutely tremendous work. Um, of Jim, Paul, sort of, are you talking about publishing? the raw information or the kind of methodology that sits around mm -hmm. statistics? Methodology. Sure, so methodology, absolutely, we always make sure that's available. Um, what we're trying to do, um, and I sort of I've covered this very much from the data angle rather than the other parts of it, that's a whole separate session if you want to book ONS for a third time, happy to do it. Um, but um, what we're trying to do within the data is make sure that there are metadata references so that when you want to get back to things like methodology, you want to get back to code lists or any definition of the information that there are roots to it, they are not in the same consistent shape, but it does make sure that you've always got those references to go back to. Um, then, uh, excellent question on Google. Um, I think I kind of worked on the basis of trying to sell to the organization that if the sky is going to fall in, it might as well be us who's pulling it down. So if there's going to be, if less people are going to come to our website because uh, more people get their information from Google, let's be the ones who are doing that. Let's ensure it's not someone else's data. But also, and I think quite interestingly for us, because it's not necessarily how I expected it to work, when we were doing that piece around um, uh, of working with some of the population information and thinking about how that would appear in Google and that having that result, that actually has increased by about 20% the click through to our population statistics. Um, so actually this guy didn't fall in and actually it was even better in a sunny day. Fantastic, thank you very much. Thank you.